Good afternoon. Welcome to my humble project. Um, it's just a humble effort. It's not really, I'm not really saying anything too far. Like, yeah, I'm saying some things, but there's sort of that I'm saying some things that are interesting, but I'm not, I mean, I don't want to go so far as to say that I'm actually saying them necessarily. It's just like I'm not. But my podcast, it's kind of on the periphery. Like the amount of people that are listening already is probably how many, it's probably how many that there should be. That's as many as I'd want to have wanted there to be. And I don't want to go out and like, I really don't want to make it so that I'm like promoting it all the time. And I don't promote it so much. Like I don't throw it in your face. You have to, you have to see me as that, you know. You have to recognize and appreciate that I'm not promoting it too much and not throwing it in your face too much that I'm saying too much that I'm saying the things I'm saying. Like, I'm not saying too much that I'm able to, that I'm truthful. Like I'm saying that it's truthful and I believe these things, but it's like, I'm not going so far because it is important. Um, the humility, I would say that the humility of it is something that should be recognized and should be remembered and should be known about me. It's just the humbleness. Um, and, but tongue in cheek aside, let's get down to brass tacks. What's humble? What isn't? What's humble? Humility is. What isn't humble? Pride. But don't be prideful. But I wouldn't be prideful, you know. That's why I wouldn't like, it's not like I would go so far that I'm actually saying like, because ultimately, as long as I'm humble, it's not like I'm going to be, well, you want to stay in humble, you know, and it's just like, are you, are you susceptible, are you susceptible to humility today? Um, is it a possibility that you are, are you worried about humiliating things? Are you worried about what might bring you humility? Are you worried about being humbled? Are you worried about embarrassment? Are you worried about exposure? Are you worried about being felled by things you can't control? Are you, are you worried about surprises, things that could surprise you? Are you worried about being shown to be surprised in front of other people? Are you worried about genuine surprise? being expressed uh, from you? Are you worried about being impressed about things? Are you, are, do you, are you worried that maybe you would show that you were impressed by somebody else that, and to the point that it might not make you the most impressive person or have the most impressive things? Uh, might you, are you worried about the possibility of a worst case scenario? Are you, are you susceptible to that? Is that something that might be a problem for you? Are you kind of person that, you might be worried about humility, like the possibility of humility is a daunting one to you. Are you? Do you think maybe you'd want to control for things that could be abjectly humiliating to you? Might you be too far humiliated at any given moment? Might humiliation surprise you? Might you be shown to be surprised so that you didn't know about something in a given moment? Because you don't want to be caught, you know, you don't want to be exposed. You don't want to be caught, shown that you were wrong. Like there might be something about you that should be exposed, but I mean, are you worried about that kind of thing? Or is it some, is it like something that you would say, part of you, would you say today by show of hands, possibly that you are worried about being humiliated and you're worried about the things that you say that you are so that uh, because the things that you say that you are might destroy you in the end. And if you go too far saying that you are something, you might be exposed as that. And if you're worried about that today, I think that it might be it might be a good option for you to sign up for Club Humble so that you so that you remain humble in light of many different circumstances. There are plenty of circumstances out there that you can't control for. If you, but if you join Club Humble, it's a great community where humble people can explain their humility to each other and always be humble in every circumstance so that they don't have to bait humiliation. Because once you join Club Humble, you always be humble. Nobody will be able to t say that you're anything other than humble. As long as you're part of Club Humble, then you don't have to worry about being humiliated because you already are. You already are embarrassed. You already are because you're always humble and nobody can tell you that you're not being humble. And, um, you might want to be able to join possibly, you might want to, 
purchase admission into the club. There are sacrifices you have to make. You do have to be humble everywhere. You Once you're in club humble, then I mean, but you can control for any worst case scenario that would destroy you at any given moment. But you, but the price is that you have to be humbled, but that's already what, that's already what you need to be. It is better to not face any sort of humiliation. But the price of being humble is that you have to be humble around this group of people and around this group of people. You have to be humble at the grocery store. You have to be humble while you're driving if you want to join Club Humble so that you are seen to be humble anywhere anybody could see you so that you exist in reality. At any point in time that you are seen, it is shown that, it is proven through your conduct that you are humble is what you have to do to be in Club Humble, but you do reap the benefits of being humble all the time, which means that humility itself, humility, humility itself doesn't come to your uh, doorstep. I would say, I guess, is the um, is the point. If you're not, um, if you remain humble, but you remain humble, then you don't have to speak. Uh, you don't. You don't have the authority. You have no authority as long as you're always humble. If you're defined by humility, because it's it's really the things that you. The identities are the ones that you prove yourself to be all the time, or the ones that you always are. Those are the identities. Do you want the identity humble? Do you want to be humiliated? Hi, I'm humiliated. Humiliated is one of the three things you describe yourself as. I'm humiliated, but you can be that everywhere. It's actually not that. Uh, it's not. It's not uh, totally out of the ordinary to just be humble. You can be in, there's all kinds of groups of people that you can be in where the entire environment of the group is there's a lack of embarrassment because nobody in there practices like the possibility of being embarrassed, putting themselves on the line, but you don't want to risk things. Like you have to watch out. You don't want to, you have to watch out for worst case scenarios. You got to be, you got to be humble, but you got to be humiliated. But humble is a word for humiliated. Don't disguise it as something else. But I mean, if you start saying, if you start saying that you are things and you're just being pride and um, pride cometh before the fall, you know that pride cometh before the fall. So slap everybody in the face with your humility so you don't ever have to be prideful. Slap people in the face with how humble you are so you don't ever have to be for a second prideful. It's just like so humble, you know, I'm just very humble. I'm not necessarily able to expose anything for sure. It's just, and I need to take into account other people's opinions. I might be, I might say that I'm humble, you know, but I don't know for sure that I am like, I don't, I might be humble, but it's kind of prideful to say that you are something. It's kind of prideful to say that you're humble. And I don't know that that's, worth it for me. But like, I think really I should think about it for a second. Like maybe I'm not being humble because people listening might hear me and not say that I was humble. And it's like, I think maybe I should listen to other people's perspectives on this before I jump into anything, before I say, before I start just speaking out of turn, that it's like, I might be speaking on authorities that I don't actually have. Like I might be identifying myself the wrong way if that's not actually the person I am, not actually the authority that I take up. So it's like, I kind of can get around. I mean, it'd be easier to not have to worry about the person that I actually am because I don't know for sure that I am anything, especially when it's up to other people's opinion that like, I think it's important that I let more people into the discussion or possible opinions into the discussion so that we collectively come to a decision to figure out if I'm being humble or not, because, um, because I'm not sure, not really sure that I'm being humble enough I think maybe I should stop and second guess myself and doubt myself because I'm not, because I don't want to put the spotlight on myself. I start saying that I'm humble. Um, cause I'm not so sure that I've been humble enough this whole time that I would start saying that I say that I was humble and who knows when a humble is coming out of your mouth that you're saying that you are, I think it's just better that I make sure to think about that. Anybody who heard me or saw me during the course of my life, that they also agreed that I was humble just so that I can make sure that I was being humble because I don't want to like, I don't want to go out on a limb and be like, Hey, I'm started being humble because I'm not certain. I'm not certain that I'm humble. And like, maybe if everybody got back to me and told me for sure that I was being that, then like, maybe I could go for it as humble, but I don't, I'm not necessarily that it's not like people are able to say that they are things. It's not like, 
it's not like you are any, you get to speak on an authority, like authority is given to other people. So they'll get to tell you if you're humble or not. And it, it's really like, I should really just stay in humility and stay subject to it because that's the problem. Like, I don't want to go, I don't want to say I'm humble. It's probably a lot safer to be within so that I stay humble because I don't want the spotlight to be, um, don't want the spotlight to be on me. But what I'm saying to you less ironically than this, whatever that I'm, this overture that I'm giving to you, this, uh, this, uh, kind of sarcastic way of talking about it. And I'm saying you want to stay in club humble. I'm telling you how humble that I am and how much I live a humble life. I am, uh, and during how much during the course of my life at certain parts of it, I've been subject to hum humiliation for myself because I aim to be humiliated. Hum humility is just what I wanted to say to you. Humility um, throughout, I mean, whatever I would say, it is all under the guise of make sure you know that ultimately it's not like I'm saying anything because I am humble. Um, and I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you how humble I am, I'm telling you how humble I get to be. And, but I mean, I do understand that other people should be able to tell me it, like it is up to other people to decide like it is, I, I'm not sure I deserve to say anything. Other people should condescend humble to me so that they tell me I'm humble. I don't, I'm not anything necessarily. Um, and especially I wouldn't say that I was humble because that automatically makes you prideful and it's embarrassing to s say that you're humble. You have to wait for, you have to have other people recognize your humble effort and you should, I mean, it's really the case that I should wait to make sure that other people are telling me I'm humble, that they recognize, because that's what humility is, because then I won't be humble. If it wasn't something that was in the back, like it has to be in the background that other people are telling me that I'm humble is how I know that I'm humble. But like, I'm not going to say because everything, because it's kind of, um, I, I go forward, but like I step back a little bit. It's all it's all like um, humble. Ultimately, you have to recognize that I know how to be humble. Like I think I've proven that I've shown how to be uh, below, and that I'm doing that I'm doing humility. And um, it's just important that I retain humble because I'm so humble. Because I'm always humble. Because humility is better. Because humiliation. Because I want to be humiliated. Because give me humiliation. Let me have it. Take me there. Take me to humiliation. I love it. I love the thought of it. Bring me further. I only want to be humiliated. I don't want to intrude on anybody. I don't want to be intrusive or invasive or go too far. I am not aggressive. I do not transgress. I do not inflict myself on other people. Affliction comes from other people. It doesn't come from me. I do not afflict. I am I am uh, not, I'm in the background, you know, I do not inflict myself. I am humility. I do humble. I am humble. I'm the most humble. Actually, you will never be able to expose me. I do not. I mean, I watch out for all the things that could possibly trip me up because I know that I'm always humble because it is anything you could throw at me. I am not impressed. I'm, I'm already humble. I'm already below. It's, I already know how little that I am. Of course, I don't inflict myself on other people. Bring me to further, deeper levels of humility. But I speak all this to you from a lifetime, from a lifetime of being humble. Oh, you weren't humble though. You don't say that you're humble. You're not being humble right now though. How are you proving your humility now by saying that you're humble? The whole thing that you're doing now seems kind of prideful, I would say. I don't know that you're able to, I don't, you wouldn't be able to say that you were humble though, because that's automatically prideful. So you clearly weren't humble, but I'm telling you that I've, I've lived a life of humble. I've been humble in lots of circumstances. I know what it means to be in club humble and to be afraid of worst case scenarios. And because if that happens, you don't want to be humiliated. You don't want, I mean, you don't want to be embarrassed. You have to protect against embarrassment and humiliation at all costs because don't you, don't you know? Because there isn't anybody in the, everybody who's successful is humble all the time, of course. Like people who are really successful, they're always humble. They're not prideful. So that's why you need to stay in club humble humble is because the people who have the most success, they're actually humiliated all the time because if you're prideful, you get destroyed automatically um, because the pride goes before the fall. And um, so if you're never prideful, you never fall. You know that? You're never prideful, never have to fall, never have to worry. Don't step a foot into pride, stay in humble. Do not for a second think about leaving club humble because you could possibly fall. 
I mean, but are you susceptible to these kinds of these kinds of ideas? Are are you worried about the diseases of them? Could you possibly be contagious towards the disease of humility? Is this something you might have a problem with the way that some people have problems with anxiety? Is humility an anxiety for you that you might take it on? That possibly, is this where you are today that you might be worried about humiliating circumstances enough that you might want to sign up for Club Humble as a lucrative option for you so that you can always you can always control for death. Are you worried about death? Are you worried about dying? Um, about being destroyed? Are you worried about falling? Do you want to protect against falling or dying or having your story rearranged um, at all costs? Are you worried? Are you trying to protect against that? Um, are you susceptible to worrying about death? Are you afraid of dying and things that might trip you up? Maybe. Um, but I'm telling you that I'm a humble guy. I'm humble, of course. Of course I'm humble. I show my humility. I am humble. I am humble. It doesn't matter what I'm doing or where I am or what I'm able to prove or what I'm able to impress you with. Ultimately, of course, I am humble. This is not anything I'm saying. I am laid back. I am not cocky. I'm not prideful. I do not give myself over to the possibility of falling, of course, because I am smart enough to avoid that because I know that to be successful is probably to be humble. And, but um, take me there, you know, take me to humble. Give me more humble. I want to be humble. I want to be the one who proves my humility. I am humiliated the most. Of course, I am more humble than you. I'm the most humble. I divulge my humility. I express my humility. Did I give enough of it? Am I humble enough? Did I arrive? Did I, could I speak on humility at all? Was I humble enough yet that I could speak on it? Because now the point I'm telling to you, what I'm trying to say now, straightforward, less artistically or something like that, is that um, humility is not, humility is not what brings you success. The people in life who are the most successful that you see are the people that are, that can speak on humility. Because to me, during the course of my life, it has confused me, me being a humble person at humble places, showing myself humble as a humble servant, humiliatingly towards other people so that people look on me and know that at every time that I should be observed, I'm a humble guy. What I've recognized is that there are people that you run into that are not humble at all, and they are very cruel, and they will, they are, they'll sadistically humiliate other people for things. And if you're in Club Humble, you are shocked by this. You're shocked that people would humiliate other people or call them names that are very accurate in a in an embarrassing way but um what i'm telling you is that there are people that have risen above humility so that they don't the people that are able to just bring up humility whenever they want so that it's shocking to you if you're club in club humble um the people who are able to bring that up are, do not care about being humiliated and so they are able to speak on it but that's like they've risen above the label so as to be able to dictate the authority of humility to other people because they have it as a possession of sorts so that it is an authority a property of theirs that they can speak on humility um some people have risen above it to speak on humility and these are the people that appear as cruel to you if you're in club humble when uh people are people humiliate other people. But if you're in Club Humble, you're like afraid of humiliation. That's the thing you're trying to avoid at all costs. And maybe the people that, it's just that if you 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 can get humiliated or you're a person that's able to be above humiliation, but it's like, how would you be so cruel as to be somebody who's above, hum, who's to be above humiliation? And in reality, it's not so cruel as that. It's just that you might get to the point that you don't care about being humiliated. And so then that allow, that brings you to a place where you can say uh, whatever to other people. Because if you rise above it, you don't care about that other people would be humiliated. You don't, you're not worried about it anymore. You're not susceptible to it. You're not worried about being felled by the disease of humility if you rise above the label of it. And so um, what I'm telling you is that it is the identities, it is the things that you're subject to when you are within the label, within the property lines of it. That is when you are in the club, humble. That is when you um that is when you are defined by it. And those are those are identities. Those are the ones that you are that in every place, every group of people it defines you as that. Then that's when you're subject to it. You're not somebody who is okay with being humiliated because you always 
take the fallback of humble in a, in any case because you ha- because you um because it's your dad, you know. He is humble as your dad. Humility is your dad. Like you, you're, you give yourself over to it so that you're like, Oh, I never said I was humble. So you never say that you, you never say that you were humble. Then you're never outside of it. I never said I was humble because the people that are humble in every circumstance, they don't say that they're humble. You don't, I never said I was humble, but I'm telling you, if you don't want to be defined by humble, you have to tell people that you are. But it's humiliating to say that you're cocky in, in almost automatically. It's humiliating to leave. But it's humiliating. You have to admit that you are humiliated. You have to admit that you are embarrassed. Are, is there not embarrassment? Is there not humility? But what do I do even by admitting it? Does that mean that it's present in my life? That's not something you, it's not something you as the listeners know about. I'm just trying to be a better person. I don't know that it does anything for me that I confess at this microphone, oh, I'm humble so that I can be above humiliation and not care about being humiliated. Not not really does it take away your humiliation just to say it. you have to live out that you're humble. I am humble, but it's like it is automatically prideful to say I am humble. That's what we make fun of people who say I am humble for. But during the course of my life, I've been humble. This is something about my life. I also find that I'm not often able to talk about myself. But this is not an insecurity necessarily. It is maybe just a personality trait. I enjoy not talking about myself. I like when people ask me, um, tell me about yourself. Because why would I ever tell you about myself? Is this a problem I have with humility? I don't know. I mean, is this like something where I'm trying to be humble and I don't want to say anything that I am? Because it's fun to avoid the question. It's fun to laugh at other people for thinking that you're there, that you're about to tell you, tell them about yourself. But it's like, it's kind of humble because you don't ever have to say anything that you are. Um, But it's like, I don't like to, what am I going to tell you about myself? I, it is more fun to laugh at you. But it's like, it's it's not humble to laugh at somebody else's question in reality. It's just like, there's maybe something not very humble about being in club humble, you know, so that you are better. It kind of makes you better than everybody else so that you are, because if you're a person that's always controlling for every worst case scenario, then never you can never be ultimately exposed. But it's like, a, it's a limiter, you know, it's a limiter to join club humble. It's something that you admit you're like that you become, you get infected with the disease of humble. It's, it's a limiter for you because you never get to be, uh, like, but it's just like some limiters you take some, some deals are good for you. Some contracts are good for you. Is humble a good contract for you? If you can really couldn't possibly ever deal with facing a worst case scenario, it's just that it's a lie that, whatever the worst case scenario that you might be worried about. If you're a kind of person like me who might be susceptible to humility, um, you're just, you might build up a worst case scenario. It's just that in reality, the worst case scenario, the effect that it has on you, whatever it destroys about your life or some like whatever way you could be abjectly humiliated, whatever way that that would be, it's just that it's not as bad as you make it out to be. What's worse, what's way worse is living in, admiration of it your entire life. What's worse is living as if you can never be that. What's worse What's worse is that you never allow yourself to die or allow yourself to fall, to be exposed or be, to be too prideful. But what is this real, you know, for me? That's what I'm wondering. Is this real for me in my life? Am I able to be, am I able to defeat humility just by admitting that I'm humble? I think it gets you somewhere, but it's just gradual. If you want to change things about your life, it's only if it's something that I want to change. Oh, but don't change out of humble. You should always be humble. That that's not something you should leave behind. It's evil. You're basically going into evil. You're going into pride. You're going into the possibility of destruction. If you leave club humble, 
you can't leave it. You might be humiliated out there. But it's like the lie though, is that you are always humiliated while you're in Club Humble. But then once you leave, you could possibly be not humiliated. But I mean, it's just less risk averse while you're in the club. Things are regulated for you. Because humble can be a governor and a regulator for you so that it regulates your circumstances. It takes out outliers and extremes and aggressively turbulent behavior and circumstances. You can regulate your circumstances by joining Club Humble. It smooths things out. And so you don't have to worry about being surprised and really just giving yourself, like you don't, whatever it is you have to express about yourself, it kind of makes everything even so that this, everything isn't given over to like some emotional thing where it's like, you might, uh, you might have to express extremes and emotion if you were faced with terrible or really fantastical situations, but you can regulate things in your life. If you join club humble or club embarrassed or club sad or club Because as long as you're sad, you can be sad. And so you don't have people know that you're not aspiring to be so much more than sad, but that you are trampled on by, by bad moods and sadnesses. Like you can continue to be trampled on by humbleness as long as you stay in the club, because you are admitting that you can't face abject humiliation, but it's like admitting that gives you a gives you the benefits of being in club humble. If you want to take that path in life, it's just that you can't be everything. So it's like, what if humble is naturally what you're supposed to be? And so then how, why would you think you should go about changing that? What if I am a humble person and like to be successful, you can't be prideful, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you it is the opposite. The most successful people are are okay with being humiliated and can speak on its authority. Just the most successful people have the least limitations. They are the least governed by clubs that they're in, that they paid for contracts that they signed themselves over so that they could be limited in a way, but have an identity so that they reap the benefits of that identity. Maybe you can make money off of it in some way. Um, I don't know, being humble or being anxious? Could you make money off of that? No. I mean, you could make influence off of it. You you can pretend. You can pretend, but you don't want to be exposed. You don't want to be shown to be a pretender in any way. You can avoid that. You can avoid being seen as a pretender as long as you're always humble, because then at the end of the day, people know that you weren't trying to be anything. Of course, you're just being humble. It's just that there's a lot that you lose. There's a lot that you don't get to be. And so, um, am I a humble person? You know, that's my question really. But what if I already am very humble and it isn't something I could change. And so it is futile for me but that's kind of what you do if with anxiety is like, I'm always anxious or I like, I am always consumed by anxiety. And so I'll never get out of it. It's just only a means to an end. And I can't ever be a less anxious person. It's just that there are things that you want. If you want to be less humble, you have to gradually become less of that. But it's like, maybe you just, maybe you're trying to change something about your life and you don't and you're trying to do too much to change it, but you can only change uh, really negative things that you don't like about yourself. You can only change them gradually. And maybe it's the case that you should only, you should just take the time to look at one thing you're doing. Like maybe you are just, maybe you are attempting to be humiliated in every circumstance. Maybe you're humiliated and you're always defined by that so that you're humiliated here, humiliated here. So that at the end of the day, nobody could say that you're trying to be anything and and like maybe that's the thing maybe you should just look at humiliation and try to be less hum try to be less uh, humble or something because it's not that great to be humble because it can actually lead to some sad things for you it can if you are humble all the time you're definitely engaged in self sabotage for yourself because because you are going out into the world and doing things you're just being yourself 
but you have to apologize for what you're doing. You have to say that things that you do are shitty all the time. You always have to apologize for regular things you do. You have to sabotage the things that are good about yourself in front of other people. You have to sabotage your relationships in ways that you connect with other people in ways that you can, you have to sabotage where people see good things in you so that you apologize so that you say that it wasn't you. Uh, you have to engage in self-sabotage to always be humble. And so it can lead to lonerism for you. It can make it so that you're very humble. You know, you're not in the spotlight. I don't intrude on anybody. And so therefore you're not like, you're not in anybody's face about being friends with them. You don't, you don't go further to be friends. You wait for them to ask you. You always wait for them to invite you. You don't ever put yourself out there because you always make it, you always make sure that they know that you're humble, which is, this is something that I do also is like people that I could be friends with. I make it so that I'm, they know that I'm humble, which means that I'm not trying to do anything here. I'm not trying to be your friend necessarily. I'm not, um, because I'm not going out of my way. You see, I'm not making the effort or whatever. You see, it's like very humble. I'm not, uh, you don't have to worry about anything with me. I am very agreeable. I am very, compliant. I'm very like passive. You don't have to worry. I'm not a creep. I'm not weird. I'm not like, because I'm humble, you know, I'm not, I'm letting you guys decide or something. You, I don't put myself out here. I don't want anything out of the situation, but that's what it can lead to for you. If you're always trying to be humble, you're always trying to not be in the spotlight. Hey, like I'm not asking too much. I'm back here. And like, it can make it so that eventually you're just not you just don't be with anybody because nobody, not, it's not like everybody, because people don't want that out of you ultimately is the thing. People don't want you to be humble, really. It's actually not, it's actually unlikable to be humble in every circumstance because you're always, you can't, people can't figure out. It's kind of like being neutral or not. It's like being neutral because you don't involve yourself. It's unlikable and unfriendly to be humble all the time because it just puts you above people in terms of humility because you're always like, I didn't, but you can like impress people with things about yourself. But if you're always humble, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like an insult to other people. Like, Oh, look what I can do while I'm still not doing anything. And like, it's not to be neutral and not show that you want to be in situations it's kind of like, kind of like being humble all the time. And it's so it can lead to some bad things for you. It is not advantageous for you to be humble all the time because it can make it so that you end up lonely because you're like, I'm just, this is a humble effort. I'm not doing too much over here, but I'm telling you my podcast is like this sometimes because it's not like I, I don't film myself, you know? Um, and I could, that's an easy step to take. I could put myself on YouTube if I wanted this to be a less humble effort and you wouldn't, you wouldn't neck, like look at what I'm doing and recognize it to be humble necessarily, but like, maybe you would, maybe you would recognize it. Be like, oh, he's always, you're always trying to be humble. Um, but don't say that you're humble. You're not humble. You're not that humble. It's just like, that's the counter argue. That would be the counter argument to what I'm saying. So you have to protect against when people might call, people might see that you're being prideful. You have got to back. That's when you need to back away. If you're a person susceptible to humility, if people are starting to see that you're prideful, that's when you need to back away back into the club so that, so that for sure you get to like, you have to for sure be humble. Like certainly you're humble as long as you don't start saying that you are. When you say that you are, you posit humbleness, you posit humility, you say that you're humble then then it is under attack. It can be under attack. It is for other people to decide. You put out that you are that, so then it is right and wrong as defined and judged by other people. You don't want to make yourself susceptible to the judgments of others. Don't say you're humble. You can always know. You can always be that at the end of the day. And it's it's disguisable too because you can say whatever. You can try to impress people with whatever and be all of these things. You can be whatever and still be humble. You know, you can be a couple of different things at once. And it would be surprising to people if you were somebody who is like, 
out and out about being interesting or unique, like that maybe you give off that you're unique, but if you still do it under the name of humility, you're still humble. Like that's kind of undefinable to people. And it's like uh, not helpful to them because you're like, well, I can do these, I can say this, but yet I'm still humble because um, ultimately it's best to be humble because, uh, because therefore I'm not necessarily what I'm saying that I am but it's an identif- identity problem. It's an identity problem to always resort to humility. Because I am always humble, I don't, then what am I exactly? What am I? I am, I am humble. Like that is my, like that's what your identity is if everybody can define you to be that. But it's like you're above identity. It's the point I'm making. And this is an art, this is something I'm trying to figure out that's just about the whole idea of identity is like you are above, I'd say that it is that you are above identity once you have the label as a possession or as a property of yours and you can speak on its authority where you're, where with regards to humbleness, you don't care about being humiliated. Only once you really don't care about being humiliated, are you not identified by it anymore? And so it's like unidentity is when you transcend the label identity is when you are within it. And so what do you want? Do you want, and so what do you want? Do you want to be humble? As long as it's it's at that point, if that's the way that it is for you, not everybody has that much agency that they can just change what they are or recognize that they're living under a label. It's not like people have agency to just be whatever in every circumstance. But if you feel like it's just something you need to recognize and then you can start to change it, which you can do as long as you admit that it's a problem for you. I admit to you my problem of humility. I admit it. As long as you admit, it's just like, I'm tired of being humiliated. But like somebody might be like, how humiliated are you? I might say that to myself. Yeah, but you're not that humiliated. But won't you just let me fucking be? Can't I just let myself be humiliated? Maybe I want it. Maybe it's, it's just like, can't I just be fucking humiliated so I don't have to be humiliated anymore? Can't I just be, I am humiliated. I admit it. No, but you're not humiliated. You're not that humble, but can't I just be humble? Can I be, I am tired of being humble. No more humble no more humble. It doesn't end. It doesn't end for you entirely at the point that you admit it, but this is me approaching the boundary. This is me on the boundary. You know, this is me saying to you, the boundary, I recognize the label. I recognize what I'm defined by. I repent from my sins of being humble. Fuck humility. I repent from being humble. The only thing I apologize for now, and this is the very last thing I apologize for, is that I was very apologetic, is that I was humiliated. But why? Because if you're always humiliated, you are always apologizing. I'm sorry for the thing that I did. And then, you know, something that I do, this is a problem I have and a reason why I want to recognize humbleness and then not be that anymore. So that, uh, so I mean, but that's a question I'm having, right? That I'm bringing up to you. Like I am, what if I'm a humble person though? And I'm supposed to be that always. And what if it's better, more lucrative for me to be humble? But it's like, well, If I just won't do what I want, then no. If I'm just recognizing the thing and saying that I can make changes in my life, no, I'm not a humble person. I don't, I don't desire to be humble anymore. That every day is a new day. It's not like every, it's not like you have to be what you were. It's not like you have to be humble. It's not like you can't change because the lie is that you are the things already too. You can't change, but it's like, I know from, I know from experience that there are definitely things you can change. You can change whatever the fuck, as long as you just recognize it, but maybe you just need some agency. I'm agent enough that I can change. Maybe you aren't, maybe, but, but what was I saying? Humble. No, I don't, I don't need to be humble. And one thing that I do, and this is another thing that 
humbleness, being in club humble too much can do for you. That's a negative. This is something I do is that I enjoy myself somewhere around my friends. I have a good time somewhere hanging out with people. And then afterward, I am sad. Can you explain that to me? I'm sad. I write off what happened. I say that it didn't even happen. I say that I was sad during it. I say that it sucked. I say that I embarrassed myself. I say that I was a moron. It could have gone entirely well. Another thing that I do is that um, I'll fixate on whatever one thing I said during the course of the night that was the most embarrassing potential thing to me. The most embarrassing thing I said at one point is like, I will remember that and think about that and think about how much I suck for saying it and how, how how humiliated I am or something because I have a hard time saying that I enjoyed something and I will make it shitty afterward, even if it was great during it. This is a problem I have. This is something I need to stop doing. And maybe it's like, maybe it's like because I aim to be humble that it kind of causes you to have to change the whole narrative to humiliation for yourself because that's your story. That's your identity. That's what you're defined by. You can't, you have to defend what your identity is. Like I have to, um, it's my story. So then I have to write the story the way that it's supposed to be that I'm humiliated all the time, even when I wasn't it's just so that I can retain humbleness because I have signed myself over to club humble and so, and so I need to stay in there. So I write the story afterward that I, that it went poorly for me, that I did not connect with people, that I was not, people did not see me as good. And so it can make it confusing for other people that want to be around you when you hold the humbleness so that you don't, so you can regulate the intensity of your relationships and so that makes it confusing to other people because they'll just think you're withholding because it's not like other people can read your mind. Other people don't know that you're always trying to be humble or like that's what they that's what you're trying to show people show to people. But it's like while you're humble, that is what you're trying to show to people. That's like something as long as you are participating in the club, you're wearing it as a badge. Like that's something you're prideful of somehow. Like you can make it so that the only thing you're prideful of is your humility and like it gets you out of pridefulness. But uh, it's just like what you show to people. It's what you want to say. And it's like, um, that's what I wanted to say to some extent, as long as I was that, as long as I'm being that. Um, it's what I wanted to say. So like I'll focus, on, I'll focus on the worst thing that I said as a means of like, and the thing is, whatever the worst thing you said was, um, like you might be somebody who's susceptible. Are you susceptible to humility today? Are you worried about um, where your life is headed? Do you know, are you worried that the future might expose you in a given minute and other pipe, other people might see you, might see you as a glitch in reality? Are you worried about having to make sense of your reality because you don't want to be a glitch in reality? You know, those are the things you need to watch out for, that you do something so embarrassing that you become a non-entity, that you become nothing all of a sudden, that you did something so out of the ordinary, like you did something so out of the ordinary that people can't possibly make sense of. Are you wor are you worried about those kinds of things, possibly doing something so out of the ordinary? Could you, are you potentially able to do that? Do you see yourself as unique enough to provide people a picture of a, a picture of yourself that's too confusing to them that they don't have words for us, so that you become a glitch in reality? Are you capable of producing that? Are you worried about abject embarrassment? Um, then maybe club humble where you can regulate those kinds of activities because if you're susceptible to it, it means that you are, you are that, you know, like you are unique enough to be abjectly humiliated to some extent, maybe, maybe, but don't say it, you know, but don't say it. Maybe it's this. Don't say it because you are on the, you're putting yourself on the line here. Don't say that though. Don't say these things. You don't, you want to retain your responsibility that you're not, you are not, your name isn't on the line for this thing. Why don't you just be humble so that you don't have to face falling? Are you worried about being a glitch in reality, about doing things? Because it's the people that 
have the ability to be susceptible to humility that are the people that have the ability to have a glitch in reality because naturally they are worried about producing these things, producing a scenario picture for other people that's too that's so embarrassing and confusing for them. The people that are worried about being too embarrassed are the people that could potentially be totally embarrassed. And so those people, they might find it advantageous to buy into humility so that they can be humble always. Um, no, I'm trying to make points. That's dumb. I'm trying to make points. That's stupid. Um, the point I wanted to make before was that, or one of the points I was trying to make is like, I might fixate on the very worst thing I said. And what's crazy is whatever is the most embarrassing thing you said at a given situation, when you're remembering it back, just to hate yourself, just to write your story that you were humble, you didn't say, you didn't posit anything too far and you weren't a glitch in reality from the embarrassing thing that you said. Um, like whatever is the most embarrassing thing that you thought you said, it isn't like whatever was objectively the worst thing to the group was something that you weren't even, you aren't even thinking about. You were oblivious to the most egregious things that you do. I would say, I would, I would reckon you are oblivious to the most egregious, the most egregious thing you said, you weren't even thinking about it. Like the thing you went too far because you think you went too far for something dumb because you're limited by your own descriptions of yourself, you know, because you think that this one thing was egregious, but it's only egregious in your mind. So it's what I'm saying is useless to try to figure out what other people's perceptions are. And also you live in reality. People can understand your abject embarrassment. Um, don't say that the things that you bought are what you are. Don't be like, this is, you should be confused about your circumstances. Join Club Humble. You could be, if you join this club, what you could be is confused about your circumstances, confused about your choices in, in life. You could look around at what's around you, like all of the things in your living quarters. You could look around at everything that you're living with and be confused about why it's there or uh, doubt your choices towards it if you want, if you're always humble, because then it'll, then it causes you to not identify yourself through what you're wearing, because what you wore isn't really what you chose, because you're not saying that you chose what you wear or what you wore. And um, because you're not making a statement of any kind, you're not making a statement with your words or the things that you're surrounding yourself with or the car that you drive, they're all just random occurrences that they were thrown upon you. And you, like, I'm not saying I take any credit for anything that I achieved or anything that I possess or anything that I wear. It just happened because I'm actually very humble and I'm not saying that I'm this through what I'm wearing. And so um, what I'm saying is that literally, and what I'm saying that is that literally, um, and it's it's humiliating like what and and it's humiliating um i'm saying that literally you might you might have an identity crisis you might have problems with your identity if you are humble all the time because then then your circumstances are controlled for you so that it's not like you are responsible that you chose any of it if you are if you aren't if it ends up that you aren't behind what you did and what you said then you don't know who you are and you will be unhappy about what you're surrounding yourself with because in reality this is how you are identifying yourself with yet you are not behind it like um like if you have a guitar in your apartment but you don't like to play guitar or something or like if you bought, if you make choices out of, in the name of being humble, just to show a picture of a humble life or something like, um, if you do think, because there's motifs with humbleness, if you do things that are humble to showcase a humble life, to promote a humble life, you are probably making choices and surrounding yourself with things that are more that are more random, but that are done in the name to of not promoting yourself. I mean, promotion through lack of promotion. You might choose to surround yourself with things that you don't 
like you'll probably, if you are aiming to be humble, you'll probably surround yourself with things that humiliate you so that you're always like, so that they aren't things that you're tempted to brag about. You might, you might have possessions that are, uh, humiliating to you so that you aren't tempted to brag about them to yourself. Like you'll probably self engage in self sabotage so that you end up doing things that you don't like because you it always has to be humble. And so the things that you like, you would be able to brag through those and share yourself, like share the culture of yourself through the things that you actually liked. But if you're being humble, then, then you're proving that you, I mean, if you're being humble, then you sabotage so that you surround yourself with things you don't necessarily like, not that you're going to do that always, but Whatever. I don't need to go a fucking hour. Okay. I don't need to go a fucking hour. Not today, not tomorrow. All I'm telling you is that I am humble. And so what does that mean for me? What if you are a humble person? I just, just leave it behind. I don't care. I don't care about what happens to me. I don't care about it. I'm, I, I should fall. I should die as what I am. I should let it go. I should let things go. It doesn't matter. I don't need to be humble. I should be whatever it is that I am. I should brag about it. I should comment on myself. I should try to be, it doesn't mean that I'll be great at it since I've lived a life of humble to this point. It's not like that's something that you take away just by recognizing it, but it's not, but as long as it's something I want, I want to be un humble. I want to unidentify. I want to unidentify with humble and I want to possess it. I want humble to be mine. I want to be it because you never rise above it. As long as you're humble, as long as you're, as long as you're looking, as long as you're trying to be humble, you know, that's what keeps you in club humble is like, you can never say that you are, but it's like something that you're always trying to be. And so you engage in humiliation and, and what does that do for you? It's just like it, but it's something that you'll do if you always aim, if you think that that's what you're trying to be, that's what you should be. That's what brings you success is never stepping a foot into pride territory. What brings you success is always remaining in humble. Then it is something you always try to be. It's something you always try to perfect to be when you're looking at pictures and images of humbleness and trying to make yourself closer and closer to that. It's just a perfecting, exacting thing where you always try to be more humble. Um, And so are you doing that? Are you humble today? Are you possibly humble? Is this, is this something that could trip you up? Are you, do you need to answer to yourself in your life? If you are in club humble, or if you need to partake more in club humble, you need to regulate more of what could possibly happen. Are you somebody who it might be, good for you to join club humble. Do you, um, but it's like, it's a, it's a sales sales pitch. It's something that you would be sold on, but you can ignore it. You can ignore humble, but maybe some things you can't ignore though. If it's something that naturally calls to you, you can't really ignore it. And so then you have to make a decision. You have to be humble. You have to be it. If you are it, but it's like you can be subject to personalities of yourself that you actually are. And then, and so in doing so, explain to other people that you never actually are that. But it's like um, you struggle with taking ownership over what you are. And yeah, so it's like I am humble during the course of my life and now I'm humble always. It's just that. What perspective am I going to take? What way am I going to look at it? The humility that I already have. Am I always below it in an identity sense? Or am I on the other side of it? So as to have this different, more positive relationship with humility for myself. Because I already have it. But I can make it that that it's just one of many things that I am rather than something that I always have to be. And so it depends on what perspective you're going to take. That's what you have a choice over. There are some things that you have no choice over. 
I don't get to choose the humility that I'm susceptible to, but I get to choose whether it's a positive or a negative for me. And that's only something that can happen gradually. Um, that's only something that can happen. I slowly become less humble um, or I slowly make it a positive where I am not living within the bounds of it. It's not a negative for me that makes things negative in my life. And so, yeah, I am humble, but it's only at the point that you admit it. It's only at the point that you admit it, really, that it starts to become a positive for you. So you should get to a place where things start to become a positive for the things that you inherently are. God, but I'm just so goddamn humble, you know? I'm just so humble. Because at the point that you are, then you can just be prideful, really. Because that's all that I wanted, you know? All I wanted was to be prideful. That's why I wouldn't say that I was humble. All I wanted was to be prideful. You get to you get to um, reap the benefits of the opposite of it at the point that you change it from a negative to a positive. You get to be... Uh, you get to be on the opposite end of the spectrum. It's kind of like you get to be prideful. Um, but, and so maybe if you have a high capacity for humility, you have a high capacity for pride since they're on the same spectrum. It's just maybe a matter of changing it from positive to negative. It's just that it's not something that, it's not something I, I don't have to be humble. I don't have to be prideful, but I wasn't being prideful. I'm not prideful to start with. I was humble wasn't prideful, but it is like, it's a little bit prideful as long as you're in club humble that you're like above everybody. So as to just, so as to declare humility at the point that somebody has you on something, it's kind of prideful to be always humble in a way. I just wanted to be prideful. That's all that I wanted really. I want to be able to be humiliated. This is just what I wanted to say to you. This is just what I wanted to show to you. This humility during, this is what I'm saying. This is what I wanted to send myself through. I wanted to send myself through the filter of humble. I wanted to explain myself through that. This is what I wanted to say to you. I just wanted to say humble. I just want to show you an example of humility. I just wanted to be humble, you know? I just wanted to actually be it. Um... I just wanted to be humble for a minute at least, or just once. I mean, that you get to admit it once is better than none. I just wanted to say humble once. I wanted to explain that I was humble once. Just once I wanted to be humble so that I get to be it. That's all. This is just what I want to do. Show to you. This is what's important. But you're like, go too far. Then you're like cursing out your audience. You're like, oh, don't don't go, you'll spiral off into insanity at the point that you're not weighted down by the gravity of humble anymore. You'll spiral off into insanity. You'll just be pride, whatever, anything at the point, because these things don't happen gradually. The second you step outside of the gravitational pull of humility and the club of it, then, uh, um, then you're just going to spiral off. You will no longer be weighted down. Who knows what you'll, you'll just be pride entirely. That's the second you do that, you'll be very prideful. You can't, you're entirely letting go of your humbleness. Um, so that you're just saying fuck you to your audience or something. And you're just like, fuck you to people. But it's like, fuck you. That's all that it's been arriving at. This train is arriving at many places. I'm stopping at many ports. Just like Matthew McConaughey says, the port is not the journey and the journey is not the destination. The journey is the port, but when you arrive at the port, that's when you know that you're getting there. You haven't arrived at the destination until you get to the port. The port is where, that's when you know, but you haven't gotten there yet until you arrive because it's not the thing that you're arriving at that's what you are. It's actually beyond that tells you what the destination is. But I just wanted to be prideful. Oh, but you're going to ruin, you're going to ruin what it was. You're going to be a glitch and you're going to, you're going to say, watch out though. You can't, you don't want to step over into pride because then you might say individual statements that ruin everything for you. You might say, so, you might say something then that totally destroys you because then if you're in pride and you're, 
leaving yourself open to humiliation, then you could be saying things that totally ruin the whole vibe and the whole effect of whatever you're trying is ruined for you. And you don't even know it because you're not making sure you're humble in every circumstance. Um, so you might start saying things that are out of pride that rub people the wrong way that you don't even know that you're saying because you're not self-aware. To, you're not constantly self-aware to be accounting for them. You're not, you're not drowning in self-awareness enough to always be accounting for when you're being too prideful. And so if you start saying things that might make it so that you are humiliated, yeah, yada, yada. Um, but I just want to say that I was prideful. I love, I love all of you love and peace, love and peace from me. Um, and, and, um, thank you.